Our deep lake water cooling expansion is uh, it's driven by the ability to utilize the lake and uh, a very clean, green, renewable energy source to be able to provide uh, really efficient, low carbon uh, cooling solution to the city of Toronto uh, and the downtown core and all its constituents. Uh, we already have a fair sized system and the expansion is effectively the ability to increase the capacity of the system and to be able to provide greater resilience and reliability to our existing system. So we're going to be increasing the capacity by approximately 30% on peak. But we're also doing is we're increasing our ability to baseload the whole system and the city. So we have major expansions going on in Toronto. Uh, we're doing a major western expansion whereby we're actually adding thermal storage, uh, you know, a large thermal storage tank under a 4 million square foot facility uh, within the city. Uh, so that anchors the western expansion. And we need things like this, uh, this new intake to be able to you know, utilize the deep lake water cooling at night, store it just like a battery would, but on a thermal basis, and deploy it during the day. So we're expanding west, we're expanding east, uh, and we're expanding north. And now with the new pipe, we're expanding south right into the lake as well. We've learned a lot over the last 15 years about uh, being able to team up with, a, with another organization. And effectively, we have to balance their consumption with our consumption. And we work really, really well together, and that's where things like thermal storage come into play and other assets come into play, is that we want to be able to harmonize the way we operate so both organizations get the benefit of optimization and cost, um, and, and greater cost control as we go through. Our existing system takes about, you know, from a peak megawatt, about 62 megawatts off the system. Mm -hmm. We'd expect with this new uh, upgrade, we would get another, you know, between 12 and 17 megawatts uh, reduced off the peak of the system. So it's pretty significant for a city um, to be able to reduce, you know, between, you know, 70 to, to 80 megawatts off of their system yeah. with the district energy. And not just that, if you think about it, without the cooling towers and everything else, the amount of water that gets saved as well is a really big deal. Right now that's in play is we're actually uh, building uh, 19 megawatts of CHP in London, Ontario. So that's in play and we expect it to be commissioned later this year. That's under a contract with uh, the regulator in Ontario, uh, with the, actually the ISO, the independent operator in Ontario under a 20 year contract and would feed into the grid and all the waste heat obviously feeds into our district in London where we already have 14 megawatts uh, installed. So that's one big project in Prince Edward I Island, our system out there which is uh, a biomass municipal waste burning system. We've actually uh, have plans to upgrade that facility to take 100% of all the, the waste from the island uh, so nothing goes to landfill anymore. All the residential waste will all come to our facility. And we're experimenting with a biomass CHP unit uh, in Prince Edward Island as well. So we're, we're looking to do both thermal and electrical. And what's interesting there in PEI is that most of their energy gets imp imported from New, New Brunswick. So this is another opportunity in a very green way to be able to provide resilience to the island um, you know, and base load with biomass in a very green way.